What's going on, everybody? I know, I know. You're thinking, where the hell have you been? Can we get some sort of schedule? What kind of, what kind of show topic is this? No one cares. No one's going to show up. You're going to get eight people in here. Let's do that again. It's too short. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Thursday, February the 2nd, 2015. Uh, 2015. It's Thursday, February the 15th, 2024, 2.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My name's Dave McRae. Coming to you live from the Voice Man Studios in Toronto, Canada. And I thought, listen, I know there's a lot of stuff I could talk about in the world of horror and all that kind of stuff. I get it, I know, you know, there's, uh, Dave, did you see the Godzilla X Kong trailer? I did, and I say this, I just, st- I, I, I'm out. I'm out. I'm just out. Um, I, I don't know what's happened with that, but it just looks like, uh, uh, it's just, uh, I'm out. I'm just like, yeah, this just not. I, although I didn't really particularly love Godzilla 2014, I did like that they were kind of taking it seriously. Nothing will ever beat the Comic Con trailer from 2014 or 13, 14, 13, whatever it was. That Comic Con trailer with Godzilla, oh, that was like, like, I, what now it's just like a, it's gone back to what I hated about the Godzilla movies from the 60s and the 70s, and that was the cheesy man in suit. These aren't men in suits, obviously. But I mean, you know, like the cheesy Godzilla's having a conversation in English with his buddy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it it just went into cheese, smelly cheese, smell, gigantic, smelly, foul-smelling, feet-smelling, cheese-smelling. That's what it came. That's what it, you know what I mean? And that's kind of how I feel. And this is not a knock on Adam Wingard or anything like that. I mean, I, it, it's nothing to do with, you know, with that kind of stuff. It's just more about just the, the creative direction, right? The creative direction that, you know, Lionsgate and, um, was it Lionsgate? Legend, legend, I think. Anyway. Warner Brothers. It's it's just the creative direction that they're going with the MonsterVerse now. I'm just like, now you're gonna say, have you seen Monarch? The the I I haven't because uh, I don't get where is it Apple HBO anyway anyway I don't get it I haven't seen it yet, but I hear that takes it a little more seriously. But just the MonsterVerse movies, I watch this. I'm just like, what am I watching? Like it just looks like a. It looks like a it looks like a Michael Bay Transformers movie, and you know, and Kong's got like. The, I'm just like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out, baby. And it, it listen, it pains me to say that because I'm a Godzilla fan. Um, so, you know, there you go. For those of you that are wondering. Uh, and there's things, there's, there, you know, there's obviously things I could talk about. And I know that when I get on here and I put something up that says pet peeves, you know, nobody's rushing to see what Dave McRae has to say. Ooh, I get it. I totally get it. I understand it. Uh, it's just been very busy for me the last couple uh, week or so, uh, lots going on, lots I'm trying to get organized, um, and, uh, and frustrations, you know, I'm meeting frustrations, trying to get things organized, um, you know, and, 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 and that led me to think, you know what, I got to jump on. I got to say hi to everybody. I know I got to do a bunch of shows. I want to do a bunch of shows. Uh, and I do have some things I want to talk about. Obviously it's the 40th anniversary of a nightmare on Elm street this year, Freddy Krueger, happy 40th, to big Freddy Krueger. I want to talk about that. Uh, I do have some, you know, other things I want to talk about, of course, too. And it's just, it's just been very busy. So I thought, you know what, for the sake of just getting something up there, keeping it light, let's do a pet peeves. This thing's not going to get any views. It's not going to get any traction. I know that, but you know, whatever it's, it's fun. And maybe somebody will tune in to see what I'm bitching about. I have no idea. Um, so I made a list and now in the past I did do a, um, I did do a, um, uh, I think there were two pet peeve videos that I posted on my channel. Like, I don't know, four or five years ago. I haven't watched those in like four or five years. Maybe there's going to be a couple here that I repeat. I don't know. But if I'm repeating it, well, then you know that clearly they still bother me. Uh, Hey, Super Chat from Andrew Stevens, one of our great moderators. But Dave, 
Thank you, Andrew. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. You are amazing. And I know I want to. I want to get going. I want to get some content. I want to. You know what's funny? Here's a pet. Maybe it's a pet peeve. I don't know. But you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, like, you know, there's just so much stuff. There is. There's a lot of stuff. Have you ever like? There's just there, there's so much. You know, you scroll Twitter and you scroll Facebook. You know, and you look around and you see what everybody's talking about. And this is not a knock on anybody who wants to talk about this stuff. Like, it's all power to you. But there's a lot of stuff that I look at and I'm just like, I just don't care. I just don't care. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and it sounds so bad because here's the thing. My channel would blow up if I actually forced myself to care, even to fake it, and care about all the things that like, and I'm just like, ah, eh. it's hard. It's hard to fake caring. That's how you know when I tell you I like or, or dislike something, I'm being honest with you. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, if I wanted to get a, you know, I, I mean, I, I, hey, hey, I like Deadpool. I saw the first two Deadpool movies. I like them. I like Ryan Reynolds. They got Deadpool and Wolverine, the most watched movie trailer online in history. There it is right there. Why didn't I jump on and go, hey, Deadpool, yeah, just, let's watch it together. Ooh, bing, bong. And I, I'm not knocking people to do that. But it, it, it's just that thing where I'm like, ah, I wish, I guess I'm trying to say, I wish I could do that. I wish I had the interest in all of the stuff that I see out there that gains all that traction. I'm just like, eh. You know, or like coming on here and and like you know the 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 woke culture, political cu culture. Get on here and bitch and moan and woke Disney. Not the fuck. I mean, Jesus, I I I blow up. I blow up. I just don't care. I, you know, I see it. and I'm just like, eh. <laughs> I know it's awful. It is. So I come on here and I do little pet peeves, and whoever wants to tune in, they tune in. Uh, I I do want to. Obviously, I want to have more horror content, of course. I do. All right. Here's some of my pet peeves, folks. We'll see if, any, we'll see if anybody actually gives a shit. Uh, here are some pet peeves of mine. I've got 10 here, although who knows? And then I want you guys to jump into the comment section and let me know your pet peeves. And in the chat room right now, let me know your pet peeves. Let me know your pet peeves. Here's one. Here's one. These are in no particular order. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's one. And I'm not talking about anybody specific as it relates to my channel. It's just something I see in general on, like, Facebook posts and Twitter posts and all that kind of stuff, usually Facebook and YouTube, um, is, you know, when you're, like, you you are, um, uh, you are, um, you know, there's a post, right? And you... <laughs> you jump into the comment section to see, or there's a video, right? And you jump into the comment section to see uh, what people are saying about whatever it is. And say in the post, there's a mistake or there's somebody said something that, you know, whatever. The, and then you notice that like there's 900 comments from people that are pointing out the discrepancy or the mistake or the flub, even though there's a pinned post that clearly acknowledges the mistake, and even though 899 other people have chimed in to mention the mistake, there's so, everybody, like, do, do people not take a look first to see if somebody else is, why do I see 900 comments from people that are, that, that are saying the same thing? So hypothetically, let's say hypothetically, I'll give you an example. I, I'm on, right? I'm doing a video and I say, uh, I say, yeah, so you know what? Halloween was released in 1982. The original Halloween from John Carpenter was released in 1982. Well, that's wrong. That's factually incorrect. That is a mistake. So naturally, uh, and sometimes you don't get pinpointed posts, fair enough, but you'll see like, you know, and they're there. I mean, you see them like, like, like the first 23 comments. Actually, it's 1978. Dude, it was released in 1978. The original Halloween wasn't 1982. It was 1978. Hey bro, you made a mistake. It was actually 1978. Dude, why would you think like that's all there and there's 900 of them. And then why is there 900? 
Well, like, I mean, you know, number 456. Did you not take a look before you fucking commented? Because I got to scroll like this. I'm on my phone. I'm like, ding, 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 to get to some sort of comment that has nothing to do with the mistake. It's everywhere. People take a fucking look to see if it's been mentioned already. And if it's been mentioned already, you don't need to mention it because it's been mentioned. <laughs> Anyway, that's a pet peeve. That's a pet peeve. That's one. That's one. Another one which is related to that uh, <laughs> is, I don't know, man. Like, you know, and you see this on Twitter. You see this on Instagram. These f clearly, clear, at least they're clearly to me. Fair enough. Listen, I can't speak for everybody else. But videos that are clearly fake. And what I mean is that like, you know, you'll get like somebody who's, you know, pretends to fall in public or whatever. And their friends are like, Oh my God, you know, something like that. You know, those videos you see about, you know, some, some are better than others. Some are better than others, right? Usually the acting's pretty bad and you're like, okay, cl clearly this is staged. You know, those kinds of things. The amount of people that believe it, we as a society are we're fucked. I can't believe it. Like stuff that I look at, I'm like, well, this is clearly fake. They're clearly fake. It's clearly fake. And I don't mean digitally like it, like it looks fake. I just mean like the performance or just, it's too over the top. Or, you know, you'll see some video about some guy losing control and he smashes his video game system <gasps> and he's smashing. And there's something about it. You know, you're like, oh, this is clearly, you can tell it's fake because the guys like, you know, all that. I'm not saying that, the, that it hasn't actually happened for real, but you know, we live in a day and age now where it's easy to fake that shit and you get online, you fake all that shit. You fake all that shit, okay? And then it gets views and likes and hearts and thumbs and whoa, bro, whoa, bro. Now listen, not everybody believes it. You'll usually find somebody in there going, yeah, this is totally fake, this is bullshit. But it's amazing the amount of people that believe it. It's incredible. No wonder, fake news, it's fake news. No wonder it's easy. It's, no, no wonder it's easy to manipulate p people and but in, in, into believing everything. It's wild. And I'm not saying that I'm immune to it. I'm not saying I'm the world's, you know, that nothing can get by me. I'm just so amazing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I am surprised on the amount of bullshit. And I don't mean like, like, uh, 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 like legitimate stuff that is, you know, maybe incorrect, but it's presented totally believable, right? Like you could say, oh, I, I don't watch this news source or that news source because they're fake news. Yeah, but if you didn't know that, if you were just watching whatever it is, right? There's nothing fake about the presentation and the production value and and just the way, like it, 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 they, they play it like Shakespeare. It's, you know, it's totally, it's totally 100%. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing to believe fake news. I fucking hate using that term uh, because I don't know, you're whatever. But it's totally different when when there's these videos and people are just like, whoa, whoa, the, holy shit, that's amazing. Look at that guy. It's fake. It's clearly fake. Come on, nobody does this. Whoa, bro, did you see? Oh my God, we're fucked. We are, it's no wonder, no wonder, no wonder. Anyways, that's something that just, it blows my mind. It's wild. Okay, all right, number two, <laughs> number two, number two. Oh yeah, well, this is pretty standard. This is pretty cliche, but I gotta say it because it, it it's wild to me. People talking in movie theaters. And the beyond that, really, the lack of objective awareness in public places, I'm looking at my notes here, public places where it impacts others. This blows my mind, ladies and gentlemen. The lack of objective awareness. You could say the lack of respect. You could say, you know, whatever. They, but it's it's the lack of, I mean, it, it is mind-boggling to me that we live in a day and age where people will still talk, like, do you have the IQ of a donut? I mean, I mean, I mean, in what world, what world do you think it's okay to walk into a fucking movie theater with lots of people there to sit there, okay? And when something happens, you know, or even just throughout the movie, you're like, yeah, 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 totally. Hey, hey, what's up, bro? Yeah, 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 totally. Or your phone. Uh, yeah, hey, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I'm just in the movie theater. What? Like, you, you need a punch in the head. You need a physical punch 
in the head. There's just no other, like there's, there's just no other way to, you know, I mean, I'm just saying it, it is mind boggling to me. It's crazy. One of the first things I do when I go to the movie theater, I put my phone on silent. My phone's usually on silent anyway, but I make sure it's on silent, right? And if I have to have it out because I don't know, I got to look for something, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll put on vibrate and I put it under my leg so that if I feel, and you know, maybe I've got kids, maybe I'm expecting an email from my agent, you know, whatever the case is, I'll take a look at it. And I always put the brightness down. I always put the brightness all the way down, right? So it doesn't light up the whole room like a Christmas tree if I have to look at it. And if it's vitally important, what I, then you leave, then you leave. You know what I'm saying? But it blows my mind, the amount of people that stay fucking talk during a movie what like what I, I don't get it I don't why are you here why are you here why did you pay I didn't pay to listen to you talk over the movie that's not what I'm here to do shut the up this isn't your living room man it's wild. It's wild. It's wild. It's like, what the hell's going on? And, you know, lack of objective awareness. Like, um, uh, so that's, you know, part of it. Uh, you know, you're at the grocery store. And there you are, right? And, you know, you're, you're picking up your groceries. And there's somebody who's got a cart. And they're in the aisle. And they leave the cart in the middle of the aisle. And walk over to something. And they're looking at something. And they're checking something. They're looking at the... What are you doing? What, like, I gotta get by. Why would you... Why are you... Lack of objective awareness. Ha look where you are in the aisle. Move the cart to the side and then take a look. If you have to leave your cart to walk down the aisle, to look at something, read something, check the ingredients, whatever the case is, then make sure your cart isn't in the middle of the aisle. I mean, why, why would you do that? Do you know how many people do that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, just leave it. <laughs> I'll just leave it here in the middle. What are you doing? Why? Why are you doing that? Lack of objective awareness in public places that affect other people. But the movie theater is just mind boggling to me. It's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. Oh my God. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, let's move on. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, mm. Being late. Okay, now listen. I understand that I, I... I... One of my... um, One of my... um Things I'm very good at is I'm very good at being punctual. Now, I know that people watching the stream are like, yeah, but Dave, you say you do a live stream at two. You're usually on it like... 10 after. Yeah, but that's intentional, folks. The reason why I don't go on right at two o'clock is because I'm waiting for people to fill in the room, right? If I go right on at two, then, you know, there's, depending on what the topic is, if I say I'm talking Halloween, there's usually like 80 people that are waiting. If I'm talking, you know, if I'm saying I'm doing a pet peeve video, there's usually, you know, 15 people that are waiting, right? So generally what I do is I always give a bit of time to let people fill in the room. If people showed up at, you know, 10 to two, well, then I would start right at two, right? But I usually, I say two o'clock so people know, oh, that's the time that, you know, we got to get ready, got to get going. Maybe I should do that. I should start saying 150 or something like that. But you know what I mean, right? So anyways, I, I just had to say that because I, I know the irony of some people that might want to call me out on that, but that's intentional. That's why I do it. I could start right at two if I wanted to, but I always give a bit of that leeway. But here's the thing. I'm a very punctual person incredibly punctual. I take after my mother in that way, not my father. My father was not very punctual. But if I say to you, and this is not hyperbole, this is not an exaggeration. There are people in my life that can be like, uh, no, he's dead serious. Like literally in the actual definition of the word. If I say to you, hey, Bob, I'm going to pick you up at uh, 445. You better be ready at 445 because when you look at 445 and you look out your window, I will be sitting there at 445. Not 447, not 442, 445. And it's not like I have to plan it. I just have one of those internal kind of, I just, I, I just know when to leave. And I think it has a lot to do with, as an actor for many years, going back to 2001, um, I had to be very punctual for auditions and casting times and all that kind of stuff. And back in the early 2000s, before I had my own car, um, I was taking, you know, transit and the subway and the streetcar and the bus and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I had to get times and all that. So, and I take after my mother as well, but I think that was part of it. So I have like this internal thing where if somebody says to me, hey, you know, what time do you think we need to be there? And I, or 
what time do you think we need to leave to be there at such and such? It just automatically, I can be like, uh, okay, you know what? We're going there. Let's leave at uh, 10 to four and we'll get there at that time. And we do, we get there at the right, like at the time. Like I don't know how I do, it's amazing. It's a gift, what can I say? People being late. Now, I don't mean like, hey, I'll be there at 4.45 and I'm there at 4.50. Yeah, that, that, that's not a big deal. That's, that's fine. But if you say you're going to be there at 4.45 and you show up at like, you know, 5.30 or 5.45, you didn't leave in time. You, you, whatever it is you're doing, you did not leave in time. Now, maybe there's traffic, maybe there's, you know, things, right? But then you let, you know, you let the person know, hey, running a bit late, stuck in traffic, whatever the case is. But if you say 4.45 and you show up at 6, or if you say I'll be there at noon and you show up at 1.30, you didn't leave in time. Whatever it is you're doing in the morning, you didn't get up in time, you went, you know, to bed too late the night before, you didn't get up, you didn't leave in time. Whatever it is you're doing, you didn't do it. And that to me is like, hey, dude, don't say four, don't say you're going to be there at noon and you show up at 1.30. Just don't do that because it's because quite frankly, it's rude and it's disrespectful, right? As you know, to have people waiting for you for that long. Hey, I'll be there at noon. You show up at 10 after 12. Okay. Not a big deal, right? There's usually that bit of leeway, right? You know, there's that leeway. But you say noon and you show up at 1.30. Oh, fuck. Oh, pet peeve. Big pet peeve. Big pet peeve. All right. Uh, oh yeah, sidewalk etiquette. This is a, uh, objective awareness. Side, I, I guess this could be a part of that. And I usually notice this, this is, I'm not trying to stereotype this, but I usually notice that this is oh, kids, teenagers, y you young folk, you young folk, sidewalk etiquette. There's nothing more irritating than, than, than people that, that, that don't have sidewalk etiquette. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, when you are, I'm a jogger, as you know, I haven't jogged in a little bit though, uh, but I'm a runner. I was running, I, I've ran for many years and when I'm jogging and so there's me, I'm solo, I'm on the sidewalk, I'm running and there's two people coming towards me. I've noticed that if it's two people that are like my age, you know, like our age group, you know, late thirties, early forties, you know, fifties, you know, in that age group, uh, they will move out of the way for me. If there's two people, right? This person here will move back behind this person and let me go by. Oh, I guess let me go by over here. Let me go by. Very nice, right? Very nice. That's fine, right? We can, we, we can share the sidewalk. For whatever reason, if it's school kids getting out of high school, hey man, what's going on? <laughs> or just young people, whatever it is, they don't fucking move. I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer. And then there's been many times where, you know, you do the brush of the shoulder thing and then they're like, oh, hey, dude. It's like, well, get the fuck up. Move out of the fucking way. Move the fuck away. This isn't your sidewalk, man. This isn't your sidewalk. Just, I don't care how cool you think you are. Hey, bro. Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, what's up, bro? I don't give a frog's fat ass. I really don't care. Move out of the way. You see me coming. I'm jogging. And I could probably punch you in the face and knock your head off like Jason Voorhees did to that guy in Friday the 13th Party. I probably could do that. But I'm not going to do that because, you know, I'd go to jail. Um, <laughs> but I'm just saying, it takes five seconds. It takes five seconds to just move out of the way and let me go by and then you can go back. Just do that. Why don't you do that? Sidewalk etiquette. Just do it. You see somebody coming towards you, whether they're walking towards you or whether they're running towards you, whatever the case is, you know, somebody's got a shimmy. Somebody's got a shimmy, shimmy, shimmy over. Just do it. I can't tell you how many times I've had to like go up onto the thing, all the way around, come down back onto the sidewalk. It's like, what are you doing? You don't own it. I don't care how old you are. <laughs> fucking move on the fucking way, man. Sidewalk etiquette. Annoying. Annoying. Man. All right. Number five. Jeez, we're only halfway through. Number five. Grocery store employees who watch you when you're using the personal checkout like you're on America's Most Wanted and have already robbed eight banks. Now, listen. You know, I don't know if I need to dress up the next time I'm at the grocery store in a tuxedo just to show that I'm actually not uh, going to rob the place or, you know, shoplift $500 worth of, not that I spent $500 on groceries, but you know what I mean. Uh, but there's many times where I'll be at the, you know, the personal checkout, you know, it's, it's, all, it's, it's all the rage now. They want to get rid of those cashiers. So now there you are standing at the personal check, beep. Beep, and you're putting it in and then, you know, and then the bag and then you got to take the bag off and, you know, it thinks that you've removed the bag and then you got to put, it's all, it's really annoying. But then you have like, you know, you know, these people, like these employees are standing there kind of going, are they going to, 
Yeah. Or they come over like, oh, you know, you need it. Just, just let me, let me check myself out. And if I need help, I will let you know. I will let you know. Yeah, it's just they're, they're, they're watching you like a hawk. I mean, it's because I didn't shave, you know, should I shave and slather on some Drakkar in a wire or something? Do I need some 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 cologne to make you, you know, is, is that what it is? I mean, do I look like a bum because I'm there in my track pants and my hoodie? It's, it's Sunday, man. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm not going to rob the place. Boop. Boop, they're looking over there. No, you know, they're kind of looking, but you can feel them. You can feel their eyes, like, looking at you. It's like, just, 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 just stop. Stop. Go and, you know, go. Just stop. You know, it's, it's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. Uh, number six. Number six. Oh, yeah. I've mentioned this before, but it's true. When people say things like, I could care less. Folks, folks, ladies and gentlemen, it is not, I could care less. It is, I couldn't care less, or I could not care less. It's really, I couldn't care less. It's not, I could care less. If you say, I could care less, like, I could care less. If you say, I could care less, what you're basically saying is, hey, listen, I could care less, but I'm not going to. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. What you want to say is, I couldn't care less, which is, it is not possible for me to care less any more than I already do. That's that. That's what that. That's the phrase. That that's that's what it is. It's not I could care less. It's I couldn't care less because you're trying to let the other person know that there is no possible way that I could care any less than I already do right now. But if you say you could care less, you're basically saying, well, I could care less. And then the other person should say, well, then why the hell don't you? I don't understand it. So again, it is not, I could care less. It is, I couldn't care less. Pet peeve. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Uh, all right. <laughs> number seven. Number seven. Oh, God. This is so... Listen, I'm an animal person. You know I'm an animal person. Obviously, you all know that I have a little uh, cat. Nate, what the hell is this? What the hell is all this? It's like fluff of something. Oh, I think that... Oh, I think I know what that's from. <laughs> all sorts of fluffs. Anyway, uh, I'm an animal lover. You know, I love animals. Uh, I, I've had dogs, uh, cats, obviously. When I was a little kid, I had a mouse. We had a hamster. Um, I love animals. I have a cat right now, as you know. And I love dogs, too. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a cat guy than a dog guy, but I love dogs. I love dogs. However, ladies and gentlemen, however. <sighs> train your fucking dog. If you have a dog, where I ring the doorbell, okay? There's nothing wrong with the dog protecting its house, right? <laughs> right? A dog, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, the doorbell is rang. Maybe they see, a, you know, car lights coming up. Hey, what's going on there? Car lights. It's totally okay. I get it. I understand. It's fine. But when I come into your residence, there should not be a WWE style wrestling match between me and and your dog, okay? There should not be a situation where the dog is leaping up onto me, even all in good fun, not trying to attack me, but, <laughs> and you know, and you're like, a bird, bird, get down, bird, come, come, bird, come, 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 bird, come, bird, come, I'm so sorry about this, I'm so sorry, <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> it's like, guys, come on, or when you're out walking your dog, and I know different breeds will require different attention, I get that, but if you are going Going to get a dog that is a massive responsibility different breeds are easier to train than others right you usually have you know your nice safe breeds like your collies and your golden retrievers and you know little th I, I get that you know your labs well labs can <laughs> chocolate labs can, can be hot too but but I'm just saying right you know what I mean like I get it there are Different breeds have different personalities, but I can't tell you how many times, you know, you go over and it just ruins the experience. The dogs, and I don't mean the dog, the the first greeting, you know, I don't mean like a greeting, you know, you come in like, hey, you know, you know, and then, you know, and they sniff you and they're, you know, they sniff you and they do the thing and you're like, hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, it's you cute. Like, yeah. I don't mean that. That's not what I'm talking about. That happens all the time, right? I had a retriever for a long time and, uh, you know, whenever the doorbell would ring, they'd go to the door. Hey, what's, hey, what's going on? What's going on? You know, you come in and, you know, and they're like, oh, hey, you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking, you, you know what I'm talking about. We've all had friends or been over to that place 
where the dog is just like, rah, 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 and, and the owner's like, gotta get her, come on, I gotta get You know, they shut them in a room and say, what is this? Why have the dog? Why have the dog? You're walking the dog, right? Anytime you, the, the, a, a per, and I'm not talking about dogs, I'm talking about anytime a person walks by, you're like pulling on her leg, sit, sit out, sit, 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 sit right now, sit, get, 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 come on, like, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, I can't, wh why do you have the dog? Why? What, 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 what is the point? What joy do you possibly get from this? You know what I'm saying? Train your fucking dog or don't have one at all. You know, because it's just so stressful. Like, I cannot, I, I can't imagine every time I want to have company over, I got to think, how am I going to wrangle the dog? How, how am I going to make this work? Hang on, we got so-and-so coming over. And I got, I just, I'm like, what? Like, come on, man. You know, and again, you know, there's nuance here, right? Every dog is, you know, feels protective of their home and, and, and different breeds have different personalities. And some dogs are easier to train than others. I don't want, I don't, I don't need the, you know, the dog owners coming at me, but Dave, no, you know what I'm talking about there's no excuse for an aggressive dog leaping up and you're just, and you're out for a walk and the dog's taking you for a walk and you're doing this like come on man get that boy or girl into some training oh fuck man it's just you know i mean just, god come on come on come on and guys, 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 stop buying dogs to fit your personality. Men, bros, bros, hey, bro. I, I find it so funny when you see a guy who's like, hey, man, what's going on? Hey, bro, what's happening, bro? You know, he looks like this big, he's big, tough guy. He's like, hey, what's happening, bro? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to get a Rottweiler, man. Get a Rottweiler. You know, and it's, it's like, oh, God, it's just so, you know, like, you know, like they, the dogs start to look like their, or the owners start to look like their dog, you know? Anyway. Anyway, okay, so that's... <laughs> That's number um, seven. That's number seven. Jesus, I got to get through this. Number eight. Number eight. <laughs> the lack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. The lack of pedestrian. Uh, sorry. The lack of flow between pedestrian and car traffic. Just because you have the right of way doesn't mean you can walk blindly. So this is something that I've mentioned, I think, in the past before. Now, of course, I live in Toronto, right? Fourth largest city in North America. Three million people in Toronto proper. There's like eight or nine million people. in the. You know, it's, it's a big city, right? And I can't tell you. Listen, pedestrians, yes, you have the right of way. Right. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, if you have the right of way, of course, if it says walk and all that kind of stuff, but I think it like, even when I'm downtown Toronto, I'm always aware of my surroundings, right? I'm always looking, even if I have the right of way, I will always take a quick look, you know, like I never walk blindly into the intersection. I ne I'm never on my phone going as I'm crossing the, like, come on, man, just because you have the right of way, the cars are not your enemy. Yes. Are there people out there that drive ridiculous? Are there people out there that are terrible drivers? Yes. Are there people out there that are aggressive drivers? Yes. But you know what? Here's something I got to say this, and I know this is not nice to say, but there's also some fucking idiot bicyclists out there too. And moronic pedestrians out there too. We're everywhere. There's moronic drivers. There's moronic bicyclists. There's moronic pedestrians. And we just, if, 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 if we all could understand, hey, I'm riding a bike, but you know what? I'm not going to win that battle with a truck. So maybe I should just, you know, kind of not be a dick and, and, and just kind of, you know, got to do my thing. And I got, you know, and same with pedestrians. Let's, let's all work together. Let's work together. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I, I, I will pull out and, you know, the hand will be going like this, you know, and the pedestrian's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. get the fuck out of, I don't care. Get out of the way. Come on, let's kick it, come on. But there's this, there's this arrogance. There's this, well, this is entitled, I'm pedestrian, I'm gonna do whatever I want. No, no, there are rules and regulations. There are rules. Let's work together. Let's flow. Let's keep it going. That, that doesn't mean accidents don't happen, but I can't tell you how many times it's frustrating. And things like, like, for example, I'll give you an example, right? So, you know, I'm in my car and we, uh, if you've, if you've driven in a big city, you know what I'm talking about, where you will, you, you come to the intersection and you happen to, oh, geez, you know what? I went a little too far. Now my tires are sort of over the, the pedestrian walkway, you know, a little bit. Right. And they're kind of, oh, oh damn, the car's right behind me. And there's a lot of traffic. And, and listen, there was a study that was released a month or so ago that Toronto has the third worst traffic 
in the world. So it's, there's a lot of construction. There's a lot of things going on. A new subway line is being built, all this kind of stuff, right? There's a lot of traffic in downtown Toronto. And so, you know what? Shit happens, right? It's not personal, right? But I can't tell you how many times, you know, you drive, oh shit, all my tires are on the pedestrian. Oh, the guys, oh damn it, I didn't, ah, you know what? It's just, it's the, it's part of being in the big city. It's part of being in the city, it happens. And then the pedestrians are looking at you like, guys, come on. Come on, all right? I mean, come on, I'm not hitting anybody. You know, it have, oh, so you gotta walk a little bit around my car to get to the sidewalk. Oh, you poor fucking thing. You know, like, come on, the looks. It's the big city, man. This isn't a utopia. This isn't uh, kumbaya. This isn't, this isn't a small town in Indiana. This is part of living in the big city. You gotta expect this kind of stuff from time to time. Pedestrian, traffic, flow. We, we got to just get it in your head. And have, I never, ever, ever, when I'm a pedestrian, and if there's a car that's sort of, you know, over the, 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 you know, the pedestrian walk a bit, right? You know, cause of the traffic and all oh, this. I never am like, <laughs> like, no, I'm just like, okay. The, you know, the guys, I get it. Like it happens, whatever. I'll just walk around. Fuck. You know, like Jesus, God fucking pisses me off. Okay. Next thing. I know I've talked about that before, but obviously it still bothers me. Um, number nine, oh, agree to disagree over facts. No, no, no. You can't. One of the biggest things that frustrates me when you're in a discussion with somebody or a debate is when they say something like, uh, well, we'll just agree to disagree. It's their way of getting out of the debate or out of the discussion because they either feel that they're losing it or they, they just, you know, are getting frustrated, you know, whatever the case is. Folks, you can't agree to disagree on facts. You, you can't do that. It's just, that's not how it works. And I see a lot of people saying things like that. Oh, well, well you know, just agree to disagree. No, you, you, you can't. Look, if we're having a discussion about, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to use a really lame example, but, but there's better examples out there. It's like, uh, you know, the Michael Myers mask is a William Shatner mask. And, it, and, and it's like, and, and you say, well, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a Captain Kirk mask, right? It's a Captain Kirk mask. Well, no, it's actually, you know, a Spock mask. It, this is a terrible example, but you know, it's like, well, no, it is because of this, this, and you're like, you know, well, we'll just agree to disagree. No, you can't do that. You, you're, you're just wrong. You are just actually factually, objectively 100% wrong. You can't agree to disagree on that. You are actually factually incorrect. There is no other way. You can say that if you want to get out of an argument. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I see that a lot. We'll just agree to disagree. Again, that's a bad example because it's very on the nose, but there's a lot of, you know, I'm sure we've all been in debates, discussions where you're like, no, you can't agree to disagree on that. That, that doesn't make any sense. That's frustrating too. That's frustrating. Uh, and number 10, uh, oh, I already, you know what? I already mentioned it. I already mentioned it because I, I, it was the uh, wildly fake videos. And well, I guess I could also say articles too, because, you know, like, I don't know. I see all these ads with these fake articles. There was this one ad I saw that was talking about how, you know, Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone's, um, uh, voice, his impairment, right? You know, what's going on? Because he was paralyzed on one side of his face. And uh, here's a agree to disagree. Uh, but he was, um, that happened at birth. He has talked about this. He has mentioned it. His brothers talked about it. That at birth, the reason why Sylvester Stallone kind of has that that thing, you know, is because one side of his his face in that in that area is paralyzed and it actually happened at birth. And there was this article that I, that I saw on Facebook talking about how, no, it was because he tried to bench press 400 pounds with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it's, it's, it's astounding. It, it's so, I'm not knocking people for not knowing the truth, but it, it's just so incredible how easy it is to trick people. It's, it's mind blowing. Like it's, it's fucking scary because you look at the comments and everyone's like, wow, I didn't know that. Holy shit. That's wild. And it's like, no. And because I'm a movie guy and you're a movie guy or gal and, and we're into movies and we're into pop culture. And you know, I grew up through the eighties and, and so that's common knowledge to me, but it wouldn't be to some people. Right. So I understand that. And I respect that, but look how easy that is. It's so easy to just put something like that up. And this wasn't coming from the onion or, you know, the Babylon B no, it, 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 this was some fake nonsense bullshit, but passing it off as real. And the amount of like, wow, emotion 
emojis and comments. It's like, holy fuck, it's wild to me. Folks, I'm not trying to get all George Orwell 1984 here, but we, we don't know. I mean, it, it is, there is going to come a day where, and it's already happened because of AI and everything. We don't know what's fake and we don't know what's real. It's going to happen. It will happen. There's a lot, no, no, is it? No, it will because it's already happening. It's already happening. It's wild to me. Anyways, those were some of my pet peeves. Those were 10 of them anyway. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact, jump into the comment section and let me know some of your pet peeves. Do you agree with some of the things I said here? Uh, tell me your experiences with maybe some of the things that I, uh, I mentioned here, but I'd love to know your pet peeves as well. Let's jump over to the... Um, uh, uh, to the, um, chat room and see what all you are saying. Let's get, uh, some of these super chats. I know some did come in, so let's get some of these. So we got the butt day from Andrew Stevens. Brandon Collins sends in a member chat. Brandon's been a member for three months. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate that. It says I'll be turning 46 in four months. Uh, what you're expecting, uh, what you're experiencing is called old man disorder. It comes for us all eventually. Godspeed, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I've been experiencing it for a while, for a while. It's true though. It's true. Uh, Frank Riker, Frank, the tank Riker sends in uh, $5. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate that. It says, thanks Dave for caring about TSL. Uh, now I know your true feelings. Um, oh, it must've been something I was talking about earlier. Yeah, well, you know, those guys at TSL, Frank Riker and Darren, I mean, they're just they're just pieces of crap, really. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Obviously, I, I oh, I'm all dark here. Uh, obviously, I love the guys over there. Uh, thank you, Frank. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, those are my true feelings. That's how you feel about uh, Atrocitus is a, mem a member for six months. Thanks, buddy. Uh, sends in a member chat and he uh, says six months since started membership time flies it really does it really does and then he sends in five dollars and says uh people that chew with their mouth open or smack their lips when eating makes me want to backhand them that's a good one that's 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 a good one uh matthew farisi let me see if i can actually go back over here and get it um matthew farisi oh i don't think so no, I'm going to get it in a second, though. Hang on. Uh, Matthew Farisi says people... Uh, thank you, Matthew. Says people who hesitate for a gajillion years of green lights. This is uh, doubtedly uh, annoying if it's a left turn and you have less than 30 seconds to turn. That's a good one. That's a good one. And they're usually distracted. And nowadays, it would be because they're on their phone. You know, 30 years ago, it would be because they just weren't paying attention and maybe, you know, we're looking out the window. Um Andrew Stevens uh, sends in a member chat. Thank you. And says, think McFly, think, think McFly, think. Um, Taylor Paulson sends in $5. Thank you, Taylor. And says, uh, I hate when people can be all happy, joy, joy. Then the next day, just be a complete dick. Also, uh, late people and when my egg yolk breaks. <laughs> I hate that. Um, yeah, yeah. When when people are sort of have those mood swings, I guess, right? They have all all different kinds of mood swings. Yep, yep. And when your egg yolk breaks, yeah, yeah, that can be a frustrating one. Uh, Brandon Collins sends in five dollars. Says I used to tell my brother the movie started thirty minutes earlier than it did because this guy is late to every goddamn event he's ever had to go to. Yeah, being late is. Listen, I mean, I understand, and I and I'm not exaggerating here. My punctuality is like you ask anybody in my life, they'll be like, oh yeah, Dave, like he doesn't kid around. And, and it's not like I have to put effort into it. I just know. I just, I don't think about it. I just know. And that is also, you know, you know, the distance and you know, when you do it multiple times, you know, when to leave and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm very good with that. And, and, uh, I'm like, look, listen, I'll be there at 10 30. They're there at 10 35, 10 40. It's, it's not a big deal. But if you're like an hour late, well, you just didn't leave in time. Whatever you were, you just didn't care enough to leave in time. You don't care enough because if you care enough, you make the effort to leave in time. That's what you do. And uh, if you don't leave in time, and that just means you don't care enough to leave in time. And and that doesn't mean you don't legitimately have things to do, but then then you got to say you're not going to be there at, at, at 1030, right? So 
it's crazy. But yeah, being late is a is a pet peeve for sure. Uh, and then Josh McKenna sends in nine ninety nine. Thank you, Josh, and says I saw Lisa Frankenstein directed by Zelda Williams, who is Robin Williams' daughter. Have you heard of it? And do you like Williams better in his funny roles or in his creepier roles, like One Hour Photo? I I haven't seen Lisa Frankenstein yet. I was unaware that it was directed by Robin Williams' daughter. That's pretty cool. Um, and do I like Robin Williams' funny roles and dramatic roles? I think I really appreciated him in his dramatic roles. And I think it's because he was so known for his comedic roles and he was great. But movies like, even though he was comedic in Good Morning Vietnam, uh, it, it had a terrific dramatic hook to it. Um, and obviously like Awakenings with Robert De Niro. Oh, fantastic. You know, um, Good Will Hunting, yeah, um, One Hour Photo. Even Insomnia, uh, directed by Christopher Nolan with Al Pacino, was a great dramatic role for him. Um, so I'll probably say... I mean, I like him in both, but maybe drama, just because it's so not what you always think of when you think of Robin Williams, because he was so over the top and so charismatic and so crazy and eccentric. Uh, but he was a terrific dramatic actor as well. Uh, and then Taylor Paulson, an extra $2, says, screw cold snow commercials and slow drivers. Cold snow commercials and slow drivers. Yes. Uh, you know what? That's one too. That's one too. Yeah, when you are... I, l listen, I have no issues if you are doing the speed limit. If you're doing the speed limit, I might be frustrated. That might annoy me because maybe you're not going with the flow of traffic. But I, how can I get mad at you for doing the speed limit? It is the speed limit, and you are doing the speed limit. So I always tell myself, well, I can't get angry at this guy or gal because they're doing the speed limit. But if you're doing under the speed limit, like if it's 50, and, and I'm talking about 50 kilometers now, but if it's like 50 and you're doing like 30, get off the road, get off the road, or get out of the way. Like, like just, it's, you, you, you just shouldn't be on the road. If, you're, if it's 50 and you're doing 50, well, then there's nothing I can, you know, it is what it is, right? I just have to plan to go around you to get ahead of you at some point. Not a big deal, especially if it's a two-lane road, right? If it's obviously the freeway, well, then, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah, slow drivers, but I will add slow drivers that go under the speed limit, you know, where it's like, come on, come on, you know. And when you go buy them too, and they're like, you know, if it's somebody who's like in their 70s or 80s, well, you know, you can kind of be like, hey, it's somebody in their set, you know. But if it's somebody that's like my age or young, you're like, come on, come on, come on. Crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, and Taylor Paulson just sends another $2 just to like. Very much appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. I'll give that a like. Or he, he just sends, he, he sends in $2. I will give it a like is what I meant to say. Uh, and I think I've got all the super chats so far, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. Uh, I believe I have. Yes. I believe I have. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, all right. Let me see if I can get some non-Super Chat ones now and see what you are saying. See if there's any juicy ones in here. Um, Don Wilk 91 says, Sidewalk will be right there, but they will walk in the road. Uh, then look back at you funny when you honk uh, for them to get out of the way. Yes. Yeah, that's an interesting one because when I was a kid and I used to ride my bike around, and I understand that in the U.S., it may be different depending on the state and the city. Obviously, here in Canada, it might be different. Bylaws can be different depending on where you live, right? The city, the state, or up here, the city, the province, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it can be a bit different. But when I was a kid, I've never lived anywhere else other than the province of Ontario. So when I was a kid growing up, uh, I used to ride my bike, yes, on the road as well. But if I was going out on like a main road, you know, like around the neighborhoods, I would be on like the street. But if I was going out onto like a main road, I would, I'd go onto the sidewalk. And I never thought anything of it, you know. And of course, back then, nobody wore helmets or anything like that. Um, but now, it's funny because I, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, 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 I think this comes back to my, you know, we all have to be mindful of each other. Just because you're a pedestrian 
or a cyclist doesn't mean that you are void of responsibility because I, I understand that the, 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 the heavy bear of responsibility will always come down to the vehicle. Of course, because the vehicle is the vehicle. It doesn't matter if I'm in a little fucking, you know, even a smart car. If I'm in a smart car going 50 and I hit a bicyclist, chances are the bicyclist is going to get the still the raw end of that deal, right? Um, so no matter what vehicle you're in, uh, the bear of responsibility, the weight of it will always, you know... I get it. But if you're a cyclist and a pedestrian, you are not void of responsibility. Look before you go. Look, because sometimes shit happens. Sometimes, you know, uh, we can be distracted by a number of things, not just, you know, our phones or things like that, which we shouldn't be on, but things like maybe there's, you know, um, another car that's about to come out or there's a honk or there's a light that, you know, flashes. Like there's something... Just because a car will have a run-in with a pedestrian doesn't necessarily mean that the person in the vehicle is a piece of shit that doesn't know how to drive. They're the scum of the fucking earth. It doesn't mean that, right? It does. It can mean that if they hit a cyclist and the cyclist is lying dead and they take off. Well, sure, yeah, I guess they're kind of a piece of crap. But shit happens on both sides, right? And most cyclists, not all, but most pedestrians and cyclists are also drivers, right? They have cars at home. They just left them at, you know, the at home where they chose to walk that day or take the, you know, whatever the case is. So you're a driver as well. You know how intense things can be when you're driving or in your, you know, in the big city or, you know, you know whatever the case is. You know this. So I don't think it's an automatic, you know, if there's a bit of a, oh, oh, oh sorry, you know, whatever the case is. We all got to be like, hey, you know what? No worries. Totally, like, things are good. You know what happens? But there's this. Whenever we're out on the road, there's all this. Ah, ah fuck you! Ah, and it's just like you know. Sometimes there's good reason to be. Sometimes there is. But if you're in a big city, there's a lot of things happening. We're, we're not in the middle of some fucking town in Indiana with eight people. You know, when you're in a big city and it's rush hour and there's cars going by and honks and traffic and lights and this and that. You got to have your wits about you. And, and and that goes for pedestrians too. Just because it turns green and, and, and you see the walk guy, don't just go, ah, you know, just kind of take a look, take a, you know, a quick look. It takes It literally takes 0.8 seconds. You know what I'm saying? And But this idea, well, I shouldn't have to do that. Yes, you shouldn't have to do that because in a perfect fucking world every driver even the good drivers would 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 have their wits about them and they wouldn't be distracted by a number of things yes in a perfect world a cyclist should just be to cycle on when it turns green and they don't have to look and they can just go but that's not the world we live in especially in a big fucking city so even if you're a cyclist even if you're a pedestrian take a look take a look just take a look Take a look, because it could be the difference between your fucking life and death. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the guy or gal that hit you is a complete asshole. And I'm not saying that, that I, you know, I know there's some people like, mm, I wonder if Dave's hit anybody. No, I have not hit anybody. I have a clean driving record. Um, but I've been in those situations, you know, where you're like, uh, you know, you're about to go and, and you realize, oh, wait, wait, there's a person there. Oh, uh, you know, and I myself, you know, are always like, oh, sorry about that. You know, and I can't tell you how many times I've got like, yeah, like I'm some mean person. Like I'm sitting there going, I'm going to fucking psych this person out. <laughs> you thought I was going to hit you, fucker. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, let's all work together here and let's fucking, I know, I, I know. Hey, there I am asking for a fucking utopia. It's not going to happen. But anyways, yeah, I hear you, man. It's fucking annoying as hell. Uh, Cody Snyder says, try being an 8,000, excuse me, 80,000 pounds of death. Cody, for those of you that don't know, is a truck driver, long haul, long haul truck driver. Uh, and getting into the passing lane, people in the left lane love to wait till you're three quarters of the way in the lane to speed by you. That, oh, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. And and that's a that's a fight that nobody's gonna win. I mean, you know, you, you could be in a in a in a, you know, I mean, listen, no vehicles win against transport trucks. And no transport trucks win against trains. <laughs> Nobody wins against a train. Um, but when you're out on the road, yeah, and there's a transport truck, and there's a lot of transport trucks here in the GTA in Toronto. The and this is I'm not exaggerating when I say this. You can look this up. 
uh, highway for now we call freeways up here highways. We don't really use the term freeway, but just know that that's what I'm talking about. The multiple lanes, uh, highway 401 or freeway 401, uh, is one of the busiest highways in the world. And the portion that, uh, goes across the top of Toronto, right? Cause it's above the, you know, the city that goes across the top of Toronto. So into the boroughs of, you know, Toronto. So, you know, Etobicoke and Toronto and Scarborough and all that is not one word of a lie is it's either the busiest or one of the busiest, uh, portions in all of North America. I think it's the busiest portion by volume of traffic in North America. And one of the busiest in the world that, that's not hyperbole, something like half a million or almost a million cars and trucks travel that in a single day. And it is loaded with transport trucks. I, there's been many times where I've been like in my car and a transport truck here and a transport truck here and a transport truck in front of me and it's loaded. Now, why are you asking? Well, the 401 highway runs from Windsor, Ontario. So basically think Detroit, for those of you that may not know where Windsor is, because Windsor and Detroit are right across from the border or are right across the border from each other. Uh, right from Windsor, Ontario, all the way to Montreal, Quebec. So it's a, it's a corridor of deliveries. Right. And so it's the long haul truck corridor. It's a major route for delivering to this area. Right. You know, and so it's, it's, oh my God, the transport trucks on Highway 401, craziness. So, um, uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, and listen, there's been, there's been times where I've sped past one, two that I see trying to get, you know, the wink, you know, I'm like, oh no, he wants to get in and I go past. But in the Challenger, it's pretty easy to do that. Um, but yeah, no, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you, you, you got to have your wits about you. I just wish people, like, whenever I see a car that is on the crosswalk because they moved up too soon, the light turned red, shit, there's somebody behind him, you know, like, if he could, you know, he would move back. And, you know, I I, I never am like, well, what the fuck? I'm just like, ah, you know, and you move around, you just, just walk around it. It's not personal. You know, not unless the guy in the car is going, <laughs> I'm on the crosswalk, bitch. <laughs> yeah, then you could probably flip him the bird because he's a dick. <laughs> uh, Thomas Cohn says, in Toronto, there's razor-fingered mechanics attacking pedestrians wearing Michael Myers hockey masks, <laughs> says Canadian Talk Radio. Yeah, well, that's true, too. That's true, too. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I haven't heard much about that since that... Uh, that story. Uh, Sengenis? Sengenis? Is that how you say that? Sengenis? Oh, wow. I get so annoyed when cars still turn when the pedestrian light is on. I dare them to hit me. Well, I think, like, again, I, I think it, it all depends on... If the, pedestrian is, if the pedestrian light is on and they're out to make the left turn, then they're supposed to be there, right? So it, it's like you saying, come on and hit me, I, with all due respect, I think is kind of you know, it's kind of childish because <laughs> they're not going to do that. Right. And you wouldn't want them to do that. Right. Um, but if you're in the car, you have to pull out into the lane to turn. Right. So when the, the hand is on, it's okay, uh, to get ready to turn as long as the car makes sure to let the, you know, the pedestrian go by. Right. Uh, so, you know, they definitely have to do that, but listen, that doesn't mean there aren't dicks out there. I just want to say that, yes, there are dick drivers out there 100%. And I'm not calling you a dick, by the way. Um, there are definitely dick drivers out there. But there's dick pedestrians and cyclists too, right? And I think that comes from an arrogance of, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have the right of way. I'm a pedestrian. You have to watch out for me. I'm void of responsibility. It's like, well, no, you're not. You do have responsibility. When the hand is orange, you're not supposed to walk, right? So if the hand is orange and I'm turning and you're walking and I hit you, you're going to be at fault. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or if I'm turning and the hand is orange, like full on orange and you run and I don't see you and I hit you. And there's witnesses that are like, yeah, he ran right. Like the car didn't, like the car didn't have a chance. You're going to be at fault. Right? So pedestrians have, have responsibilities too. But I understand that the bear of responsibility will always err on the side of the, of the, um, Motorists, obviously, because of the vehicles we're in. I just wish more people would be like, hey, you know, like, 
calm the fuck down. Um, all right, some more super chats came in here. Let me get these because I don't want to forget them. Uh, and some member chats did too. Uh, hang on. Josh McKenna sends in $1.99 and says, I hate when people never respond to ghosting. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Or you write this long thing and they're like, okay. You know, you've seen that as a meme before, but that's true. That's true. And I also hate um, uh, a pet peeve of mine is, um, well, yeah, yeah, th the ghosting, right? At least do your best to respond and let somebody know that you've got it and you're going to respond and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that can be tricky. Uh, Johnny Russell sends in four pounds and 99 pence and says, when I'm on my half hour break at work with my visible headphones on and people keep talking to me, having to keep them, uh, having to keep, t uh, hang on a sec, having to keep taking them off and on. God damn it. I get you. I get you. Yeah. You're just kind of like, oh, yeah, I get it. Totally get it. Yep. I get that. Um, a member chat from Cody says, uh, thanks, Cody. Appreciate that. Says, this is Dave's version of Carlin's list of people that are that are pass th th that are pissing me off. Maybe it could be, Cody. It could be. Cody sends in a super chat and says, pissing, damn it, autocorrect. That's all right. I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Brooke Scarlett. Hey, what's going on, Brooke? One of our great members here has been a member for six months. Thanks, Brooke. Says, great stream. Miss these reds. Dave, did you see the Twisters trailer? If so, what are your thoughts? I did see the Twisters trailer. And I got to be honest with you, I it just kind of looks like the same movie over again. Um, when I read a Wikipedia article on it, I guess this is a... They're, they're calling it a standalone sequel, which basically means that it's a sequel but it's not following any of the same characters or narrative beats, you know, canonically. Like, it's not like we're following, it's a sequel. So I guess that would tell me that it lives and breathes in the same universe. Like, so the story that happened to Helen Hunt and Bill and um, Bill Paxton, that does exist in this universe, but there, it's not about them or that story or their characters. It's, and I'm like, okay, but it, it kind of looks like a, a complete remake with just new people. So I was kind of underwhelmed. I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I gotta be honest. I, I, I wasn't particularly, yeah, I was just kind of underwhelmed. You know, it, it just looked like a, I don't want to say carbon copy, but it just, it looked like a remake. It, it did not look like a sequel at all. It looked like a remake. Like the story beats are almost the same. So I was just kind of like, oh, okay. I don't know. They should have called this movie Twisted Sisters. Oh! Anyway, or Twisted Twisters. Um, anyway, that's kind of how I feel about it. Uh, Cody the Zombie has been a member for three months. Thanks, Cody. Sends in a member chat. Says, Dave, did you ever watch Thanksgiving? I did. I have a video on my channel. I'm a Cray Live where uh, I talked about it. I thought it was really good other than the opening. It was a little goofy. Yes, uh, a... McCray Live, not the one before this one, but um, a couple of weeks ago, I gave my entire thoughts on it. And um, I liked it. I did. Um, I thought it was very kind of Scream-esque. I liked it more as the, I, I liked it more as the movie went on. I thought the first half was kind of like, okay, you know, but right from when um, the, the uh, wife of, of that, um, I forget her name now, Kathleen, I forget her name right from the moment where she was being basted on the table, right from that moment to the end of the movie, I thought it kind of took more of a serious tone and I actually kind of started to like it a bit more. If the rest of the movie had been like the first half, would have been fine, but it would have been kind of a one-off for me and I wouldn't necessarily have thought about maybe caring about a sequel. I don't particularly care if they do a sequel now, but I'm more open to it now that the last half sort of won me over a bit. Um, so yeah, I thought it was all right. Taylor Paulson sends in $5. Thank you, Taylor. And says, saw ACDC in 2010. I saw them in 2001. I saw their, their stiff upper lip tour. You must've saw the black or seen the, the black ice tour. Had nosebleed seats. And then I won main floor tickets at the Bradley center in Milwaukee. I was close to the stage. Unbearable. Um, yeah, I, uh, I've only seen them once and it was the stiff upper lip tour uh, when they came to Ottawa because this is 2001 and I was in Ottawa at that time. And uh, my dad, 
being who he was, was able to pull some some strings. So uh, he, he, I think we were like 14 rows or 10 rows or something from the stage. Like it was, and right beside the, the catwalk, it was wild. And uh, I really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. And I went with my brother, Neil, who's a big ACDC fan. So um, yeah, just awesome stuff. And apparently they're doing a power up tour across Europe. I'm a little worried about Brian Johnson's voice. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried, but We'll see how they do. We'll see how they do. Oh my goodness, Lee the Machine Bowers, ladies and gentlemen, goes hard into the paint with a super chat of $99.99. Amazing. Thank you so much, Lee. I really, really appreciate that, man. Uh, for the channel, Dave, you're amazing. Never change, my friend. Thank you so much, Lee. I'm going to like that as well. I didn't realize you could now like Super Chats, that's awesome. I'm going to have to start doing that. Uh, you, got, you got four likes, five, including mine. Thank you so much, Lee. I really, really appreciate that. That's that's just awesome. Uh, Taylor Paulson sends in $2, says, ha, ah, unbelievable. I don't know if Taylor's talking about the $99 Super Chat. I'm not sure, but I, I will like that as well. Thank you, uh, Taylor. Appreciate that. By the way, if I... If I forget to like a super chat, don't take it personally. Uh, some I, I can just see a scenario where there's there's times where I forget to do that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, member chat from Melissa. Hey, Melissa, what's going on? Uh, great channel, Dave. Thank you. Well, thank you, Melissa. And thank you for being a member here on the channel. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. I'm glad. I know I, the, the content's been kind of all over the place at the moment, but uh, uh, I want to get back. I want to get back and doing stuff. And um, if I didn't go live today, I, I might not have been live till the weekend. And I wanted to get one out there and I wanted to do one that was fun. You know, pet peeves are always fun. People like ranting and raving. I don't know if this is going to get any, you know, any views necessarily, but, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, all right. Have I got all the super chats? I think I have. Let me just go back over here and double check. Uh, oh, Mendel Goodman sends in a member chat. Thank you, Mendel. And says, Dave, you should host the next You Know What You Know What Really Grinds My Gears. Uh, you mean like uh, from Family Guy? Oh, yeah, there, there'd, be, there'd be a lot of them for sure. For sure. Uh, I think I've got them all. Yes. Yes, I believe I do. I believe I do. Okay, just want to make sure... I've got them all and I'm not missing anything. Um, okay. Okay, let me. Okay. There we go. All right. Just want to make sure. Um, Alex Shambach says something that has always irks me with movies is when a movie is supposed to take place during a specific season, such as autumn, and the scene is covered in greenery, a la Halloween 1978. Uh, that obviously was for budget reasons. Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. It depends, you know. I, I think um, for me, it just depends on how how glaring it is, I think. You know, um, I could do some movie pet peeves. This was sort of just like a general pet peeve kind of show. Um, but I definitely could do some, some, uh, <laughs> I definitely could do some movie pet peeves for sure. That That's a, a good, uh, a good one for a future topic for sure. Um, Andrew, excuse me, Aaron Click. Hey, Aaron, what's going on? It says, Dave, have you seen the teasers for Long Legs? It's marketing for horror thrillers at its finest. They're unsettling, creepy, and don't reveal much. Yeah, I, um, so here's the thing. I saw the first one, uh, the first teaser. It, it, uh, are there more? I'm not sure. Um, I saw one where it would just like showed like a photo of a family, and then you just heard like some voice say like, that's not my daughter or something. Um, I thought that was very effective. I agree with you. That is the epitome of a teaser trailer. I love how people are calling the... It's so weird to me how people are calling, although I do understand it, calling the Deadpool trailer a teaser. That's not a teaser trailer. What, it's a teaser because you didn't see Wolverine and uh, that makes it a teaser? That's a fucking trailer, man. There was a lot that was revealed in that teaser. Okay, you didn't see Wolverine, and you didn't get to see Wolverine and Deadpool interact, and if that's your litmus test for it crossing the threshold of a teaser into a trailer, 
okay. But to me, I guess in the world of superhero films, that's a teaser. But to me, teaser trailers, I always look at teasers as old school teasers. You know, like what I released for It's Me, Billy, Chapter 2. Or what they're doing with, you know, Long Light. Like, those are teasers. Those are classic teasers. The modern teasers now are like, you know, two and a half minutes long, three minutes long, and they show you so much. Okay, so you didn't see Wolverine. Well, that doesn't make it a teaser, but I guess it's a teaser by their standards. It's a teaser by their metrics. Okay, okay, all right, okay, all right, all right. Um, But I haven't seen any more. Here's my thought. So when I found out that Nicolas Cage was going to be in it, I, I have to admit, I like Nicolas Cage. I do. I like him as an actor. But when I heard that Nicolas Cage was going to be in it, unless I'm wrong on that, but I think that's the one that he's in, right? I was like, oh. Because with Nicolas Cage in horror, I'm like, well, is this... Like, Nicolas Cage is an amazing actor. An amazing actor. But I'm not a big fan of the satirical stuff that he does. Like, every now and then is fine. Like, that self one he did where he essentially plays himself. Like, that's a lot of fun. And, like, sure... I don't know, like that teaser trailer was so brilliant, so effective. I want this movie to be serious. I want them to take it seriously and play it like Shakespeare. I don't want it to be like a Nicolas Cage kind of horror movie. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying when I watched the teaser and then I found out that Nicolas Cage was in it, I was like, ah, like those things are kind of like, uh, okay, so what kind of horror movie is this going to be? Is this going to be like a Nicolas Cage kind of satirical horror movie? Or is this going to be like full-on, dead serious, he's fucking playing like Shakespeare, he's amazing in it, he's... F- like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you deliver teasers that are that effective and that great, I'm like, don't turn this into like a... You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, right? So that's, that's my thought on that. But I, I really haven't seen anything more, I don't think. Uh, Frank Riker says, my biggest pet peeve is when people, uh, is people who use zero to describe zero for, uh, for a number. Zero is fucking letter, you little, <laughs> you, you litter <literate> fuck. <laughs> that's true. Zero is a, not a number, really. It's the absence of a number, I guess. Although, is it a number? Number zero? I don't know. But I know what you're saying, Frank. I do know what you're saying. Uh, oh, you mean O, O, O. Use O as a number. As a, I, uh, okay, okay. I get you. I get, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no. I get what you're saying now. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It can be tricky. It can be tricky. Um... All right, member chat comes in from Lee the Machine Bowers says, uh, Dave, did you see the AMC new Ghostbusters popcorn bucket? It's a ghost trap. Looks amazing. I haven't. No, I haven't seen that. That sounds really cool. You know what's funny? Whenever I go to the movie theater, which uh, as I've said many times on this channel, ironically is not a lot. Um, but when I do go, uh, I always, I never get popcorn or, um, I mean, I, I have gotten popcorn in the past but i never get popcorn i always get uh um i always get like a um candy you know like sweet tarts or something i'm, I'm more of a candy guy or like a peanut butter m&ms you know or, or uh, peanut butter m&ms yeah peanut peanut m&ms or like whatever i usually get those i don't usually get popcorn I'll be totally honest with you. I cannot remember the last time I had popcorn at the movie theater. It might be 25 years ago. Full, full honesty. Uh, when you're a teenager, you get popcorn. I don't know why. And there's been many times where I will go into the theater, pay for a ticket, go in, sit down, not have anything. I just pay for the ticket. I don't have any water, don't have a drink, don't have any... I ha- I, I literally have nothing, and I just pay for the... For, you know, for, for the movie. And I just watched the movie. I've done that too. Um, it's always fun to get a little something, but I'm not a big snack person. I, I do get some things from time to time, but I'm not a big snack person. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I haven't seen that. Chester Franklin Jr. Hey, what's going on? Chester says, Dave, I have one pet peeve in mind. Like Halloween 3, Season of the Witch takes place in the fall season. There ain't no witches in the movie. And what year did it take place? Uh, and and what year did it take place? Not 1978. 
Um, so <laughs> season of the witch. There's no witches in the movie. Well, I think it's um, it's more of a philosophical kind of thing, right? Uh, uh, uh there the, obviously there's the witch mask in the movie, but I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Um, yeah, they they could have. I, I I get what you're saying. Yeah, you're taking it very literally. Um. No, it doesn't take place in 78. Does it say what year? It's probably just the early 80s. You know, it's probably just the early 80s. Probably in the time, probably 1982. Um, I know it I know it opens like on October 20th or something like that. But I, yeah, you're right. I don't I, I think it's probably supposed to be present day. That that would be my guess. That'd be my guess. Um let's see here. Uh, Melissa says, I can't find any store popcorn. I can't find any store popcorn actually tastes like movie popcorn. And I've tried them all close to, uh, all close to best is jolly time. Interesting. Well, they do have, it's funny. There, um, you, uh, can't you get microwave popcorn that, that is supposed to be like, tastes like it's at the movies. I haven't, I'm not sure. I know there's a, at the mall, uh, there's a, like in the food court, there's like a big place where you can buy like cinema tasting popcorn. I should try that and see if it does. Frank Riker sends in a super chat. Thank you, Frank. Says, I got to be careful what I say because this is personal. I hate half-ass jobs people do. For example, leaving a single dish in the sink Tying off the garbage bag, but not throwing it out. <laughs> yeah, I yes, yes, I, I I get what you're saying with that too. Sort of the that half-assed, yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things like that, or leaving like you know, um, uh, a carton of milk or a carton of juice that has like this much in it. They leave that in the fridge or whatever the case is. I imagine if you have kids. You will definitely run. Now I know your kids, Frank, are still quite young, but when they become teenagers, they'll probably, you know, you'll probably run into that a lot more. But it's personal. It's personal. So anybody in the Frank Riker household that's watching, uh, it's the way it is, folks. The way it is. All right, all right. We'll go for a few more minutes here, and then I'll wrap it up because I do have some things I have to take care of here. Uh. few things I have to take care of. Okay. Uh, let me see. Sacred Straight Production says, pet peeve is when people who eat with their mouth open or talk loud in public. Yeah. Or I love it when um, when people make phone calls and they put the phone call on speaker. But like, do you know what I mean? Like, even if I, I never do that. Now, if I'm home here at, uh, at um, alone, I will put the phone on speaker. And obviously that's fine. But if I'm out in public, I'm always like this. Always. That's like, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear your, I don't want to hear your conversation. I really don't. Stop doing that. Lee the Machine Bauer sends in another very generous super chat. Thank you, Lee. Says, did you see Godzilla X Kong second trailer came out yesterday? Thank you, Lee. I really appreciate you supporting the channel, man. You're a great supporter here. Um, I have, and I actually started the show off today talking about the Godzilla X Kong trailer. And I'll just quickly recap and say I'm I'm out. Listen, I'm a big Godzilla fan. If you follow me for any length of time, you know that. Love Godzilla, my favorite Godzilla movie. This is, of course nostalgia. I've yet to see Godzilla minus one. I've yet to see it. I know I've got to see it. I will see it, but I've yet to see it. But my favorite Godzilla movie growing up as a kid was Godzilla 1985. The one with Raymond Burr. I actually have the poster framed at the end of the hall here. Um, I actually have a little Godzilla 1985, uh, figure as well. Um, I just, it just looks bonkers, stupid, ridiculous to me. And this is not an attack on Adam Wingard. This is not an attack. Like, it's not an, it, It's not personal. It's just the direction for which they've decided to take the monster verse, the direction for which Warner Brothers and, uh, you know, Legendary and 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 the, the writers, the team, the creative direction for which they've gone, I'm just like, yeah, that's, it's just not for me. You know, Godzilla, I think Godzilla 2019, Godzilla King of the Monsters, uh, directed by um, Mike Doherty, I believe. That's my favorite 
in the MonsterVerse. I think it was the perfect balance between monsters and human people, and I thought it was great. It was very Godzilla. It was, it was very pro Godzilla. Um, that's probably why I like. But I I really like that film. I do. I could watch that movie. I really like that movie a lot. Um, I think it's better than Godzilla 2014. That would probably be my next favorite is Godzilla 2014. Um, I think it's better than Kong Skull Island. I don't like that movie really at all. Um, just, eh, just, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of it. Um, and Godzilla versus Kong. It, it's, a, I thought that looked ridiculous and it was fun. It, it was fine. And I'm sure I could watch Godzilla X Kong and just, but I just hate things like, well, no, no, you can't take it so seriously. You just could turn off your brain and pretend it's, it's like, yeah, okay. But that's not how the monster verse started. You know, like the, although I'm not a huge fan of the 2014 film and I have my issues with it. I love how seriously they took it. They took it so serious, not, not overly. And maybe some people think they took it too seriously, but like that, again, that Comic-Con 2014 Godzilla trailer with, with with Oppenheimer's speech and and you know on the Destroyer of Worlds and and just the 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 scale it just was so like wow like we're getting a fucking serious and now it's become Transformers and it just looks bonkers dumb it just looks dumb and again it's not personal I just think this is not it's just not the direction I wanted them to go it looks just as dumb as the cheesy 70s Godzilla movies just with better technology and CGI instead of men in suits and I'm just like, ah, I, I want something more ground, more serious, you know? And, 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 uh, and, and I found that the 2019 film was sort of the, the threshold, you know, of, uh, I don't know. I, I just, it's just not for me. It's not for me. I'm out. I'm out. If this was Shark Tank and they came onto Shark Tank and this was the presentation, I would be like, hey, listen, somebody's going to love this. You're going to make a lot of money because people are just going to want batshit crazy because people don't care. But for me, it's not for me. I'm a Godzilla fan. I love Godzilla. But this is not for me. I'm out. I'm out. And it hurts me to say that. It hurts me to say that because I like the look of this Godzilla. Not the look. I'm not a big fan of what they're doing. Like how he looked in 14, how he looked in 19. Was it 19? Really? Was that? Was it really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because in 2016 or 17, there was Kong. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There was one. in Yeah. Um, how he looked in Godzilla, um, the King of the Monsters. Fucking love. Like I, I but yeah, uh, yeah. Just seeing them running and it's, ah, it just looks so cheesy. It's and cheesy and if like what and the 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 big uh, he's got a power glove power glove great graphics like what are we doing? No, all the more reason for me to watch Godzilla minus one because that even though I haven't seen it yet I I hear about characters and how serious they're taking it uh, you know even Shin Godzilla. Right, even Shin Godzilla, like how serious they took it. The draw, it's very serious. Like I like that kind of stuff. I don't want this. To, it, it looks too video game. It just looks too dumb. <laughs> Godzilla and Kong are running beside each other. Like, what's gonna happen next? They're gonna be high fiving each other and going woohoo. You know, like I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Modern peasant says Dave has left the building. He's out. I am, and it pains me to say that. And again, this is not personal. It's not an attack on Adam Wingard, or, or it's not, not that. It has nothing to do with that. It's just the creative direction for which they've decided to now take the universe. I'm just, I, you've lost me. I just think it's just really silly and dumb now. So, but that's me. That's me. All right, five more minutes, folks. Five more minutes left in the show, and then we will. Uh, Call it a day. Um, okay, let me see here. I just want to make sure I don't miss any super chats. Uh, Alex Shambach sends in a member chat. Alex Shambach has been a member for six months. Thank you so much, folks. Appreciate that. By the way, folks, if you want to become a member here on the channel, the link is in the description or just hit that join button. Uh, we're doing our third episode of One Good Scare, which is the Halloween only show where we talk nothing about Halloween. Uh, we're doing that this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be talking about Halloween 4 Part 2, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on uh, my favorite... Fa my, my favorite Loomis facial expressions. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. See, it's where we can get silly and get dumb and get ridiculous. 
that's where we can do that. It's going to be a lot of fun because I want to know, I've talked a bit about my ideas for Halloween 4 Part 2. I'm going to kind of lay it out a little bit on that show, but then I want to hear what you guys would do for a Halloween 4 Part 2. That's going to happen this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you have to be a part of uh, le- uh, member level number two, level number two, um, if you want to be, um, if you want to check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, all right. And then Super Chat comes in from Lee. Oh, my God. Lee. Lee is dropping bombs. He's dropping haymakers. Amazing, Lee. Thank you so much, Lee. I really appreciate it. Lee drops another generous Super Chat here uh, for this time, $49.99. Thank you so much, Lee says. Again, for the channel, hopefully two dudes and some bullshit return soon. It's definitely coming back soon. Probably maybe sometime in March. I have to talk to Tony. We got to figure out what we want to do uh, for our first show back. It is going to come back. There's just a lot of things that the wheels have been turning. There's a lot of things going on, not just with It's Me, Billy, Chapter 2, of course, and Post, but you know, in my personal life as well, getting things in order, a lot of changes here or there. and so, Just a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. On. Nothing bad or anything, just a lot of stuff going on. So, um, and of course, with my voiceover work too, uh, which really is the the big, uh, uh, big, um, uh, big thing, uh, which is good because it's been very busy on that end as well. So, uh, yeah, so um, lots going on. Uh, but yes, Two Dudes is going to come back. Uh, I mean, we're nearly at 200 episodes. I got to get us to 200 episodes. So, yeah. For sure. And Lee, thank you so, so much. Uh, says, I love my two dudes, plus Loomis Road uh, video still gets me every time. Uh, cheers, my friend. Thank you, Lee. Really appreciate that. Yeah, that, um, yeah, that, yeah, that Loomis, I know, I, I know the video you're talking about. That is a video that I saw on YouTube. I was watching just uh, like a uh, compilation of Road Rage videos. And I came across this video, this dash cam, where this guy in front of this car gets out and he looks like Dr. Loomis. And he walks over and he's yelling and screaming. And so what I did is I took, I ripped that video. I took it, I downloaded it. I put my own audio to it where I sound like I'm the guy in the car and I play Dr. Loomis. It's only like a minute long or whatever it is, but it's really funny if I do say so myself. It's on my channel. If you YouTube Dave McRae, Dr. Loomis road rage or something, it'll come up. It's really funny. Most of you have probably already seen it, mind you. Uh, but again, thank you, Lee. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, let me just go back here to the other screen because this is where I can see all the Super Chats in a sequence. And I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, Alex Shambach, Lee the Machine Bowers, Frank, Lee, Melissa, Mendel, Taylor. Yep, okay, I've got them. Good, good, good. Uh, wait a minute, where are you? There you are. Go over here. Uh, Danita, hey, what's going on? Danita Brown, nice to see you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm late to the party. You are, the party's almost over. There's only two minutes left in the show, but that's okay, Danita. That's okay. Hey, it's better late than ever. You made your appearance. You have graced us with your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, Danita Brown. <laughs> You're here. That's all the counts. But you'll have to watch the... You, you'll have to go back and watch the stream. <laughs> uh, CM, Chris, my man. What's going on, Chris? Says, Dave, you could always do perk fulfillments for those purchased uh, the two dudes perk. That would be a good way to get back in. it. That's true, too. That's not a bad thing to do. That's true, too. Absolutely. Yes, for sure. And that is coming down the pike as well. The pike, the pipe, coming down the pike. The pike that is definitely coming. Uh, oh yeah, there's lots of things that are happening. Because um, another thing as well is that Bruce has recently moved, so he's been. Uh, that's another thing that's been taking up a lot of his time. So uh, he's been getting his new house in order and painting, and and uh, I know one of his daughters is applying to university, so that's taking up a lot of time. And and there's just lots going on. Um, so we are hoping that, uh, you know, as we approach the end of February, we can really get back into the swing of things in terms of perks and, and, um, and obviously, you know, the movie and all that kind of stuff. And, um, so there's, there's lots going on, lots happening. There's lots going on, which is why things have been kind of a little wonky, but, uh, yes, that is a very, very good idea. Cause there's, you know, quite a few of those, which would be fun to have on. 
Uh, IDT Kennel says, hi, Dave. Have you seen The Last Voyage of the Demeter? I have not, IDT. I have not. I know the movie you're talking about, but I have not seen it. I have not seen it yet. Not seen it yet. Um, let me see here. We got Luke Joel says, I don't care what y'all say. The Halloween trilogy move, uh, movies was a big letdown for me. They could have done something so much better and different. Well, Luke, you should not care. You should not care, Luke. It doesn't matter if, 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 hey, Luke, all, all that matters is that you didn't like them, right? If they didn't work for you, Luke, they did not work for you. And that's okay. But they did work for some people, right? Different strokes for different folks. Different strokes for different folks. Uh, Taylor Paulson sends in $2. <laughs> Got to give that a like. Gail Weathers signing off. That's it. <laughs> Taylor, you're never going to let me forget it. And I love it. I love it. That's right. Gail, what, that is how Courtney Cox's Gail Weathers has to die. If, if they don't take advantage of that, if they don't do that, if they don't sign off, if, 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 if and we don't even know what's going to happen with Scream 7 here, but if they do eventually decide to kill off Gail Weathers, if she does not die by going, Gail Weathers signing off <laughs> that's a gigantic missed opportunity i even you know what i think in all in all seriousness i think that would be even i think that would be too cheesy even for scream do you know what i mean i know scream is self-aware and it's got a bit of that you know spoof ish kind of vibe to it that might be a little too cheesy even for scream i don't know i i don't know <laughs> But if they do do that, I want payment, baby. Actually, I think it was Tony Michaels that came up with the idea, I think. I can't remember who came up with it now. We got to figure that out. We'll send them an invoice and we'll split it. We'll split We'll, we'll split it. We'll split it. Um, all right, folks, listen, that is going to do it for me here. Oh, wait, is it Danita's birthday? People are saying happy birthday, Danita. Is it your birthday today? Really? Well, happy birthday, Danita. Or it says, wait a minute. And Medusius is saying, is saying happy early birthday. Oh, wait, no, it's today. Danita says it's today. Well, happy birthday to you, Danita. Amazing, amazing. I hope you have a wonderful birthday and uh, that you get... Uh, you get what you want if you're if if or or if not you know maybe you're not exchanging gifts you at least spend it with some loved ones or with some friends or 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 you spend it however you want to spend it that's what i'll say that's what i'll say amazing 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 um all right folks listen that is going to do it for me on this episode of mccray live thank you of course to my amazing moderators frank Riker, tab of the short darren sands chris baber cody snyder and andrew stevens thank you for doing what you do i really appreciate it thank you to the incredibly generous super chats from Lee the Machine Bowers, amazingly. Thank you to all the super chats, of course. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, $100 or, or $2. It helps support the channel, and I appreciate it very much. So thank you to each and every one of you uh, that donated to the channel today. I really appreciate it. And thank you to all my members as well for being members here on the channel. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You are all amazing. That will do it for me. If you're watching after the fact, or even right now, jump into the comments section and let me know your thoughts on the pet peeves that I talked about here today and maybe even some pet peeves that I didn't mention. Just stuff that really grinds your gears. Jump into that comment section and let me know some great pet peeves. I would love to know. Get the uh, the discussion started into the comment section below. Um, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Uh, I will be back soon, very soon, and uh, have a great rest of your Thursday and I will talk to you all very soon. All right, folks, in the meantime and in between time, I will talk to you soon. Wait, that's better. Sometimes you got to wet the lips. That's good. Cheers. <laughs>